Hello again. Today we are going to get to the end of our story about Esther. So, so far we've seen how God took somebody who was a slave, who came up from nothing, literally nothing, to become queen of her country, and how she was able to save her people by being brave when she needed to be. And how he had Mordecai, who even though he was hated by one of the most powerful men in the kingdom, God still had plans to do something very special and very cool for Mordecai. And that's where we're going to take up our story today, is we know that last week we talked about that Mordecai was able to send out the edict to say that the Jewish people were able to basically uh, defend themselves. And then God took care of the part of making the other people afraid of the Jewish people so that the Jewish people really had the upper hand and they were able to defend themselves in a really bad situation. Sometimes we forget that God can really be involved in a situation and do much more than we ever expect or ever think because God is God. He has so many more things to his resources that we will ever, ever understand because God is all-powerful and all-knowing. And isn't it cool? He's also all-loving for us. So with that, um, in chapter 9, and it ends up in chapter 10, we hear about the fact that they celebrated because they had such a great victory. And they had the victory on the day that they were expecting to. And the king went to Esther and said, is there anything else that you would want? This has gone the way you wanted. Is there anything else? And she said, could we have one more day? And so they had a second day where they made sure that everybody knew that God was in control and they weren't going to have the upper hand over the Jewish people. And because they had such a great victory, they decided, Mordecai and Esther, that it should be something remembered every year. And so they established a festival called Purim. Purim was named after the, they had sort of a dice things called, um, uh, they're like, um, they were like throw things, but they're called pur. And they, that's how they used it to help them sort of make decisions. And so that's how Haman had figured out what day they were going to set aside as the day to uh, try to get rid of the Jewish people. But because it backfired, they named the day Purim and said, we're going to have two days every year to celebrate how God turned something really um, d disappointing and confusing and upsetting and just seemed like it was out of our control into a time of great victory. So a time of defeat became a time to rejoice with the Lord. And so that's why we made the noisemakers, because in Jewish synagogues all over the world, they celebrate these two days. So today is Purim, and it's one of the days on the calendar, if you look, every year it comes around. And it's a time that we, even though we're not Jewish, we can remember that we owe so much to the Jewish people because they helped us know the story of what happened in the Old Testament and guarded it and kept these scriptures for us. And so we today can celebrate too and remember that God is God. And it says that they decided that Purim would be a day of feasting and joy, of giving presents, of food to one another, and gifts to the poor. The other thing that happened, which was very interesting, is that when everything settled down, it said that Mordecai the Jew became second in rank to King Xerxes, preeminent among the Jews, and held in high esteem by many fellow Jews because he worked for the good of his people and spoke up for the welfare of all of the Jewish people. Guys, we can be that person too. So, just like Mordecai was now second in command, that he was powerful and able to use his positive influence to do good things, we can do good things too. So don't ever be afraid to stand up and do the right thing because God is with us. God always goes before us and he will never leave us or forsake us. Now, to enjoy the whole story and put it all together and because we're celebrating, I gave you a paper plate. Oops, sorry, drops off. I gave you a paper plate that has these holes in it and I did that on purpose so that you could turn it into a crown. So whether you want to be a king or if you want to be Xerxes or if you want to be um, Esther or you want to be king or queen yourself, if this fits on your head like this, great. If it doesn't, you can actually just tear one of them open a little bit and make it a little bit bigger. Or you can wear it like a tiara, which a tiara is one that just goes part way around your head. And so you can actually 
make yourself a tiara with all the jewels. And I gave you all kinds of stick-on jewels so that you could make your own special crown to celebrate whether you want to celebrate this way or you want to celebrate this way, whichever way, so that you can be Queen Esther or you can be King Xerxes. And then I also gave you this because remember, oops, sorry, upside down. It said that it's a day of feasting. So we can have this. And I thought this was sort of cool because if you look at the pieces, there's things that help, it can help us remember part of the story. Like for example, there's a rainbow, which we know tells us that God always keeps his promises and helps us remember that way. And there are hearts to show us that God loves us. And there are, um, there's the horseshoe that can remind us about the fact that Haman was honored. I mean, would thought he was going to be honored and had to take Mordecai through the city. So there's almost like there's these different pieces of our story hidden in this snack bar. So I hope you've enjoyed the story of Esther. We'll be continuing on with a different story next week. But as I said, remember, this is a time to remember that God loves us and God is in control.